Hello, everybody, and welcome to Voice Up Gone Digital. My name is Samuel Pang, and I'll be your host for today. I'm very, very glad to tell you that Voice Up Gone Digital is now officially public, and we will be filming different students from all over our CHK and more. Today, I'd like to start off asking you guys a question: Well, what is your dream? As a DP student, I know that school can be hectic at times, and we tend to forget how to enjoy life. However, I'm not the only one who thinks that way. Born in Taiwan and moving to Hong Kong for a better education, I would like to welcome Cherry Wu, an academic scholar at RCHK, to our first episode of Voice Up Gone Digital. Hi guys, my name is Cherry. I'm 17 and I was born in Taipei, Taiwan. Me and my family moved to Hong Kong when I was two. I previously went to Victoria Shanghai Academy, a more localized international school for primary. And right now, I'm a DP student at RCHK. People might not know, but I'm actually a really religious person. As a Christian, I'm deeply connected with the beliefs, values, and traditions of Christianity, which promotes tolerance and acceptance. A lot of people actually call me Wu Chi, but that's a long story, so I won't go into that. While many people see Cherry as a hardworking, academic-oriented student, she also enjoys playing basketball, doing art, and even playing music. However, things were never that easy. Growing up, Cherry was heavily influenced by her parents, her teachers, and her friends, who shaped her into the well-rounded student she is today. Well, ever since I was young, I grew up in a family of a Taiwanese background. So my parents are traditional Taiwanese parents, or in other words, Asian parents, who value family, respect, academics, strict discipline really strongly. They often lecture me about the responsibilities of a student, and whenever we ate at the dinner table, they would constantly remind me about the importance of studying and completing schoolwork as a part of my job. In terms of my academics in primary, I never really paid much attention to my academics. I can honestly say that my grades didn't mean a lot to me back then. In my mind, it was just a number. I mean, I was happy around my friends, but not around a number written in a red pen. So it didn't really mean that much to me. However, I've always wanted to explore new things. So I tried out di different leadership roles, such as head prefect, house captain, and up till then, a number was just a number. And I never really liked math back then, so seeing a number on my report card didn't really make me any more happier, so... Up until year 5, school was all about exploring and trying new things. However, it was around that time when my homeroom teachers began to encourage me to change schools. You see, my year 5 and year 6 teachers were actually quite concerned about my education. They both encouraged me to step out of my comfort zone to meet new people, new friends, new teachers, new environment, and also broaden my social circle. For a 12-year-old kid like me in primary, I never thought about leaving. I was happy where I was, and I did not want to lose my friends. Just when I thought my life was going to end there, my parents actually gave me a Chinese analogy. They told me, which basically means on how I, should so, I would be somewhat similar to a frog in a well if I choose to stay in my old school and will never be able to reach outside of the well or to explore the new world. To be honest, when they said that, I actually ignored them because I thought they were so repetitive and kind of annoying. But then some, uh, somewhere deep inside, I felt reveal, relieved that somebody was actually alongside of me, helping me along the way. I did not understand the analogy, but I understood that if so many people were encouraging me to change schools, it must be a worthwhile experience. And so, I switched to RCHK, and here I am now. Thinking back, despite the long nights of worrying, I'm actually glad that I made my way out of the well and that I was, that I was protected in, because it has allowed me to come this far today.
Months and months after moving into RCHK, Cherry slowly made new friends and became the center of attention. She became a high academic achiever and earned herself an academic scholarship. At RCHK, every boy knows Cherry as a hardworking, smart girl that always puts a smile on her face. But Cherry doesn't always think herself that way, and she encourages students to live for themselves and not for other people. Although people might sometimes characterize me as a hard-working academic scholarship student, but to be really honest, I don't see myself that way. Instead, I would describe myself as a slow thinker and a slow doer. I enjoy working under a non-stressful environment and I value the process over the result. Also, I think I'm less of a score-oriented student and sometimes I do feel quite uncomfortable in an extremely competitive environment. At the beginning of year 8, I actually found a group of students who shared similar passions as I did. This group of friends eventually became a positive motivation and has made me more determined to work hard by providing me with positive energy throughout MYP. At this point, I just really wanted to experience a lot of things at school and make the best out of my school life. To me, school is more than just subjects as it allowed me to explore my passions and hobbies. I particularly enjoy being part of the school teams, music performances, art-related activities as they promoted cooperation and team spirit. Other than that, I also value the fact that through these activities, I was given the opportunity to meet people who share the same passion as I do. Mindset is the key, so I think it's best to be well-rounded and motivated at all times. I believe that it's important to develop skills outside of academics since grade does not define a person completely. I was never the type to plan things out, so being a top academic student in my year group was definitely not part of the plan. But for most of the part, I just focused on myself, and the grades other people got didn't really matter that much to me. Every day I would work, it felt like an artist painting a picture. Time passed by so quickly, I knew that the level of success in my work was dependent on me, so there was no point worrying or procrastinating. I think consistent effort and concentration is the key. People should never try to aim for a number, but instead, they should try to aim for a work that they can be truly proud of. Grades wasn't something that I tend to think about until year 10, which completely changed my views towards grades and academics. Back then, I was an extended math, a class of math prodigies. The feelings of being put into a class with people who could probably calculate what 124 to the power of 23 is in their heads was just frightening. I mean, who would ever bother to calculate that in their heads? Eventually, I scored a 3B on my report card out of a 7. In IB, this means a lot. It is what you call a scoring a 30% out of 100 points on a test paper. When I first saw the score, I was like, oh crap. I feel like my heart had been hit by a rock. It sank right to the bottom and immediately I began to doubt myself. I mean, who wouldn't? Getting such a low grade in the school environment I enjoyed so much was a huge buzzkill. I remember right after the test, I began to ask myself, am I going to survive year 10? What am I going to do? I mean, what am I going to do? Although as students, we probably heard people saying that it's okay to fail and all those usual stuff. But I think it's only when you experience it yourself that you'll truly understand it. After weeks of worrying, it finally hit me that we're just students and failing is just another stepping stone towards success. I remember all the moments when I managed to succeed through hard work and within the year time, I improved from a 3B to a 6A. Have you ever thought about how often it is that we simply doubt ourselves with one single mistake? I think that one common error that we make is the belief that failure is the direct opposite of success. Perhaps intellectually, success is to score good or to ace a test. But emotionally, if we're unable to accept failure, then we definitely have not succeeded at all. As we DP students move towards the end of our high school career, many of us are beginning to think about our future careers and university applications. However, for Cherry Wu, it's not that simple. As a talented girl with many dreams, she wishes to pursue a happy life one that she will not regret. During my recent summer holiday, most of my friends began to prep for university and their future careers. As a scholar, I often have people asking me how I prepare for university. 
but in all honesty, I can't really answer that. Unlike most of my friends, I'm actually very uncertain about my future career and aspirations. It is very difficult to make this decision as I'm passionate about a lot of things such as art, music, and anything creativity related. I've actually had this conversation with a lot of people throughout the year. However, every single time the conversation would eventually lead back to how my parents seem to already have an ideal path that they would like me to follow. My parents are both bankers, so they're often inclined towards the idea that I should choose a safe career choice for my own good. Coming from a Chinese family, it is typical for a child's family to try to make their children enter an ideal career such as lawyers, doctors, bankers. But at the dinner table, there is often a discussion about my future career being realistic. So in some ways, I agree with my parents that the idea of safety, but rather than being realistic, I prefer the idea of being real to your heart. So as much as I would like to satisfy their expectations, I also wish to strive for something that I am truly passionate about. I'm pretty sure a lot of people heard of Jeremy Lin. You know that Taiwanese rising basketball star, a dedicated Christian? Ever since I watched his basketball games online, I began to look up to him more and more as a person that pursued his own dreams and met his own expectations. Similar to me, he was, um, he was raised in an Asian family with strict parents with high expectations. So after the process of training to become an NBA basketball player, he's been through countless inner conflicts regarding whether he should stay in the league or to find another career. His religious values were what kept him going, determined and confident. Despite the hardship he faced, his determination has become an inspiration to me. Even now, I play basketball and do all sorts of things outside of school, not because I need to do it for college, but because I truly enjoy what I do, and life would be meaningless without this enjoyment. I've always seen school as a place to learn and most importantly to bond and to make connections with other classmates and teachers. However, it is sad to see that the Hong Kong culture tends to influence how students picture the idea of school, which leads to the trend of constantly comparing themselves with each other. As teenager, we should always try to aim the best out of ourselves without stressing out. I mean, an IB of 45 or 56 isn't really as big as 124 to the power of 23, so I don't think we should be that frightened just yet. I wish I could be as prepared and as determined as some of my peers about a certain dream or aspiration, despite the fact that I seem to be doing pretty well in terms of academics. I am really clueless about what path I would like to take in the future. It sometimes makes me feel really directionless as I do not have a goal to work towards. But hopefully everything will eventually fall into place and as I continue to seek for my passion. And everything will fall into place indeed. I'm sure Cher will make the right choice and live a happy life. Yes, school can be quite troublesome, but we should all remember that grades doesn't mean everything. Like Cherry, we should live for ourselves and pursue our passion. That is it for today guys. This is Samuel Pang signing off from Voice of Gone Digital. See you guys next time.